The Ukrainian aid conference has officially begun in Paris, focusing on the growing energy crisis as a result of targeted Russian attacks on power plants. That's right. The conference led by French President Emmanuel Macron is meant to bring the international community together to address Ukraine's most direct needs. Now, attending countries will be asked to provide their support by mid-March. They will also have access to an online portal to respond with humanitarian aid in real time. That conference comes just one day after G7 leaders pledged their support to Ukraine. President Zelensky's virtually attended the summit, calling on leaders to secure peace in the region. NBC News correspondent Ellison Barber joins us now from Kyiv, Ukraine, with the latest. Ellison, it's great to see you. So what were some of the main takeaways of President Zelensky's virtual speech during the G7 summit? And what is he asking for? What did he have to say to Russian officials? Yeah, good morning to both of you. Uh, he covered a lot when he addressed uh, the G7 uh, group. He addressed them via video link, as you mentioned. One of the things that he spent a lot of time talking about is what he believes is the great need for Ukraine to be provided with additional weapons. He said, ultimately, even though Russia has not achieved what it wanted to achieve on the battlefield, Ukraine is still majorly outgunned by Russian forces. He said Russia has far more missiles, far more artillery at their disposal disposal. And because of that, he said they're going to need a lot more help. Listen. Ukraine needs modern tanks. I ask you to make this defensive weapon to us. It is possible to do it now. Ukraine needs stable support of artillery with howitzers and rockets in order to prevent escalation from the Russian side. We need more response artillery and long-range rockets. The more effective we are with these weapons, the shorter the Russian aggression will be. So Ukraine's air defense systems have been under a lot of pressure. We've seen these large-scale missile strikes targeting energy infrastructure in Ukraine since early October. But they're not just using missiles to do that. Uh, Russian forces have also used Iranian-made dive-bombing drones. The thing to remember there is that those drones are relatively easy to produce. They're pretty cheap to make in the scheme uh, of weapons. And the resources that Ukraine has to use in order to intercept those when Russia sends those drones towards cities like Kiev. Uh, those things they're using, they cost a lot of money. So they say they need their uh, resources repleted. And quickly right now, I will uh, note that we and the majority of the country, I think 23 out of uh, 25 regions in Ukraine are currently under an air raid siren. This has become a weekly thing in a lot of cities. And for most people, the concern when you're in a place like Kiev is that something is coming trying to target energy infrastructure. Sure. Guys. Allison, very quickly, European Union ministers have agreed to more financial support for Ukraine. They also agreed to more sanctions against Russia and Iran. So what can you tell us about these moves and when can we expect to see a final deal on this? Yeah, so the bloc has agreed to add about 200 names to this upcoming sanctions package, but they have not finalized the details within the package itself. So in terms of the names, they've agreed to add to what will likely be another sanctions package. They say they're focusing on targeting uh, different individuals and Russian groups associated uh, with the defense sector, uh, some associated with the Russian uh, state media group, as well as people who are involved in providing them with producing paying for the drones that we've seen them start to use with a lot of frequency. The package, if they agree to one, will be the ninth sanctions package. Uh, one of the uh, top officials within the EU bloc discussing this has said that they're really close to an agreement, but there are a few details within that package that they still need to finalize. Blaine Sinclair. Important reporting. Alison Barber, thank you so much. Stay safe. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.